second part of our lab was to assess association between ragweed and burrweed. So when we counted up the ragweed, uh, you also recorded if burrweed was present in that grid. And what we're interested in finding out is if we find ragweed, is it more likely or less likely to find burrweed? In some cases, it could be random. In some cases, maybe we have a positive association or maybe we have a negative association. We measure association by calculating a coefficient of association C. This coefficient of association is calculated uh, by taking one half times the sum of these values. And we'll talk about how we did this. Now, just like our dispersion, every time we go out and sample this, we're going to get a slightly different value. We're going to get a slightly different value just by chance alone. We're going to sample, our grids are going to be in slightly different places than they were when we went out and actually made our collection. So what we are, we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to calculate our coefficient of association, then we're going to com compare it to a value and run a statistical test to see how likely is it that we will get data uh, as extreme or more extreme than what we saw just by chance alone. The test that we're going to run is a chi-square test. Now the chi-square test you've, it has been introduced to you in uh, the first year of biology classes. That is, if, you've, if you took it here at ASU, you've, se you've seen it and you've done it. Now the chi-square test technically compares observed to expected values, and our null hypothesis is that our observed matches what we expect. For us, our expected values are going to be created based on the assumption that our coefficient of association is equal to 1. So for this test, we're going to test is the coefficient of association equal to 1 or is it not equal to 1? To determine which of these hypotheses to uh, accept, we're going to run a chi-square and we're going to calculate a chi-square observed value. Now if you've done the chi-squares before, you should recognize that this is our observed chi-square values. What we'll do is compare our observed chi-square values to a chi-squared critical value that's pulled from a different statistical table. If our observed value is less than the critical value, then we know our p-value is greater than 0.05. It's too likely that chance alone gave us uh, our actual data, so we conclude then that our coefficient of association is actually equal to 1. If our observed chi-squared is greater than our critical chi-squared value, then we know our p-value is less than 0.05. We have less than a 5% chance that, to actually get this data just through random chance. So we would then conclude that our coefficient of association is not equal to 1. If it's not equal to 1, we then just look at our value. If it's greater than 1, we know it's a positive association. If it's less than 1, we know it's a negative association. So how do we go about actually doing this? Well, here's a contingency table. This table is from uh, another lab, and I have took that frequency table uh, of ragweed, and instead of having all the different numbers of ragweed, I keyed it as either ragweed was present or it was absent. So we had 144 grids that did not have ragweed or burrweed. We had 57 uh, grids that only had burrweed, we had 48 grids that only had ragweed, and we had 26 grids that had both burrweed and ragweed. If I take the sum of this table, you will see that we have 275 grids. This matches what we did when we looked at our dispersion. Now we're going to compare observed to expected values, and our expected values are going to be derived by assuming that we have uh, independence that the probability of finding one does not affect the probability of finding the other. So to do that, what we are going to do is calculate row and column sums. So what we'll do is calculate a row total. I want the sum of those two values. And I'm going to fill just right down. So I have 201 grids that did not have ragweed, 74 that did. And then I'm going to get a column total. And this one will be the sum of those two rows. And I'll fill across. Now to calculate our observed values, or our expected values, we're going to look to see where 
what value we are actually calculating. So we're going to do this one first, and that's this cell. So since we're in here, we're in this row, and we're in this column. So we're going to take our row total times our column total, and we're going to divide it by the table total, or our grand total. And this gives me an expected number of grids. So if we were randomly distributed or randomly associated, I expect to find 140, 140 grids that did not have ragweed or burweed. To do absent and present, I want this row total. So we're in that row. We're going to multiply it by the column total, and we're going to divide it by our table total. So we expect 60, almost 61 grids, to have burweed only. Moving on. We want this row total, so we're on our new row. We're going to multiply it by that column total. And then we will divide by our table total. We get 51.6. And then lastly, we do our row total times our column total divided by our table total. And what you will see is if I take the sum of this table, it will match the 275 of our observed. Because we took the data here and said, if our data are randomly associated, what will we expect? And this is what we get. So now we want to calculate our coefficient of association. Our coefficient of association uses this equation. So you can see we have observed and expected. And then I have letters, A's and D's. Well, what we can do is key out these rows. So I have A, B, C, and D. And these correspond to the expected A, B, C, and D. So our coefficient of associations are going to be using these cells. We're going to have our observed and expected A's and our observed and expected B's. Now, if our coefficient of association is actually equal to 1, then our observed and our expected match. So the observed of A divided by the expected A will be 1. Observed of D over expected D is going to give us 1. That gives us a total of 2 in parentheses. We multiply it by a half, and that gives us our 1. So what do we have here? Well, I'm going to do 0 0.5 times, and then parentheses. We have our observed A divided by our expected A plus our observed D divided by our expected D in close parentheses. And I just want to point out that we are using the grids where, there are, where the plants are either both absent or both present. Those are the squares that we're using. They're either both absent or they're both present. So for this, for these data, we have a coefficient of association 1.09, 1.095. Now, just based on that, we would we might falsely conclude that our our plants are positively associated with each other. But hopefully you can recognize that if we repeat this experiment, we could perhaps we could get 0.91. Um, instead of 0 0.109. So what we're going to do is run a chi-square test to determine if this value is actually equal to 1 or not. So what I've done is I've taken my information here and I've made a classic chi-square table. So our ragweed will be absent or they'll be present. And for each situation, our burweed will be absent or present, absent or present. So what I will do is use my equal sign and say that's my absent absent. This is my absent present. This is my present absent. And this is my present present. So that corresponds to A, B, C, and D. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the expected. Now the expected, we could round to whole numbers. That's fine. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm not going to, just so you can see our actual numbers. And it is possible that you'll have you'll see expected values that actually match the observed, uh, in which case you'll get a chi-square equal to zero. And I think it's a little bit 
it's less un it's less interesting when explaining how to do it. So anyway, we have our observed column, we have our expected column. Now we want to do this. We want to calculate it. So what I'm going to do is do my observed minus expected. And then what I will do is take that value, the observed minus expected, and square it. And then I'm going to take that value, so the O minus E squared, and I'm going to divide by my E. So using the formulas equals observed minus E, and I'm going to fill all the way down. And you'll see that you'll probably get same numbers or similar numbers, and you'll have some positives and some negatives. That's OK. When we do this number squared, now it gives us all positive values. And they're all the same. That's to be, that, I'm sure that's to be expected for, the, for this type of analysis. And now we're going to take that, that number and we're going to divide it by the expected. And I want to do that for all of them. So now I have my O observed minus expected squared divided by my expected. What we're going to need is the sum, because that will give us our chi-squared observed value. So this is the sum of this column. So our chi-squared observed is 1.17882. I will actually just use equals and reference that. Now we need to know get our critical value. And our critical value is going to be pulled from a statistical table. Much like our t table, we need a degrees of freedom. Now if you've had if you've done this chi-squares, you've set it up like this, and you are probably thinking our degrees of freedom will be three, because we have four rows and we lose one uh, when we do our test. And you're not quite wrong, but you are wrong. Because what we actually have is we don't have just one table. We actually have a table that has two rows and two columns. So what we're going to do is take the number of rows minus one, just like you've done, and we're going to take the number of columns minus one. And since we're working with one table, we're going to multiply those values together. So our degrees of freedom in this case is, this is 1 times 1 equals 1. So now that we have our degrees of freedom, let's get our critical value. So this chi-square table was posted on Blackboard. And it has very similar to the t-table. We have degrees of freedom running down our first column. We have our different alpha levels running across the top. Now with this table, we don't have alpha 2 and alpha 1, it's just one single alpha because if we are, uh, if our observed actually matches our expected, we start at 0 and then as we deviate from our expected values, our numbers gets larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. So we don't really have a one tail or two tail type of test for a chi-square. So we, as with all of our tests, we're going to use this 0.05 column. So the 0.05 column, we will read down the column to the appropriate degrees of freedom. And our appropriate degrees of freedom in this case is 3.841. So our chi-square observed is 1.17882. Our chi-square critical value is 3.841. We now make our comparison. Is chi-squared observed greater than or less than our chi-squared critical value? It's less than. It's less than our critical. Thus, our probability, our p-value, is greater than 0.05. We have a better than 5% chance to actually get an observed chi-square value of 1.1788 just by chance alone. Or extending this to the coefficient of dispersion, we have a better than 5% chance of getting 1.095 or, more extreme, maybe 1.1, 1 .1, uh, just by chance alone, if these are actually uh, randomly associated. So even though this number isn't exactly 1, we recognize that if we repeat this over and over and over again, we're going to get values that will 
be around that one, and the statistical test allows us then to conclude that, yes, this number is equal to one. Therefore, our, co our association is random. So your, your numbers will be a little bit different. Uh, if you miss lab, ask your lab instructor for the data for your lab, and go ahead and do this for your grids and your transects. And when you feel comfortable, then you can tackle the homework. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and email me.